So before I plug any power into this thing, I need to do some inspection on it. And in the meantime, so yeah, let's do this instead, because this will be fun. Okay, what do we have? A TFT display. 240, 320, okay. We have uh, <laughs> ST-Link uh, programmer for ST-Micro controllers. So we're learning a new microcontroller today. These guys, yeah, I've got it. I, I ordered a few of them months ago, well, maybe a year ago, and I haven't gotten around to playing with them, so there's, there's something there. Um, what do we have here? These, ooh, these are USB um, <laughs> computer on a chip. Uh, so you've got basically a ST microcontroller. Somebody built one really small, I think, and it actually fits inside the USB um, port. Like, so it's completely concealed by the by the shielding around the port. Pretty incredible. But anyways, these these look pretty small. Okay, so um, there's some surface mount soldering to do. Uh, so we'll have to uh, have to get ourselves ready for that. And then what's, what else is in here? Uh, yeah, some jumpers, some uh, breadboards, a oh touchpad. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Swivel webcam cover? Aha! I suppose. Sure, why not? <laughs> so you can open and close it. All right. We have a... An EFF badge. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh-huh. And a big protobore. And some stickers. And stickers. And stickers. Oh yeah, that'll that'll help me get through airport security, won't it? Um, cypherpunk. Yeah, USB um uh, computer on a chip, or an inject a uh, key keystroke injector. Um, I think people have made keystroke injectors with those because uh, computers just think that it's a uh, keyboard and it starts listening for keyboard events and off it goes. So if you know what um, what your target configuration is um, in terms of hardware and software, then, uh, well, uh, software anyways, off you go. Probably even get it to look around for places that it can actually save things and maybe even do it in a way that um, the host OS doesn't even see. Hmm. That'd be crazy. But anyways, I speculate. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so this looks interesting. So these will be ST uh, microcontrollers in here. And also probably the smaller chips are the USB, USB uh, driver. So yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice, nice, nice. So let's have a little fun with that. You know, I was just listening to the Risky Biz podcast and <laughs> they were talking about a, um, a U2F key for storing um, your cryptography tokens um, to make it easier to use um, secure communication, crypto. And I think what we're making is a couple of UT UTF uh, U2F uh, tokens for storing your crypto keys on. Huh. <laughs> nice! Thanks to the people who designed this board for putting in offset um, drill holes for these connectors because they just yeah, they sit in place so that you don't have to futz around. So this is the STM32 that I ordered. STM32, 32-bit um, ARM microcontroller. Um, 8 megahertz. Uh, and apparently these guys are the updated version to these. So this is the blue pill. This is apparently the black pill is what I'm led to believe. And also on 32. Um, but I, is it a faster clock? I don't know. No, still 8. 
Um, so yeah, and then uh, I got a, a stealing program that could come in various colors. But what is the big advantage to this um, right now for our application, which is crypto? Single um, operation multiplications, um, as well as hardware division. Um, and, it, and it can run um, much faster than Arduinos here. So yeah, that's why this, uh, this microchip. So doing the SMT soldering on these is going to be tricky to say the least because those are some tiny, tiny components there. Um, it's hard enough. It's hard enough figuring out which is which based on this on the components. I mean, you can you can barely you can barely see. Okay, so those are capacitors because they don't have anything written on them. The only and th this is also a capacitor here and. These are resistors, and if we got a magnifying glass out, we could probably figure out what value that was. But on our board here, we've got a capacitor there, a capacitor there, a resistor there. This is probably a NeoPixel or an RGB LED. That's a voltage regulator. This is our microprocessor, and that is our serial. And the biggest thing on here is a uh, micro switch. So this is going to be some darn fine soldering to do. So I'm getting out my super, where, where are we here? Super fine tipped soldering iron in the hopes that I can actually do some soldering on this thing. So let's just see how that goes. And I am inferring that the footprints, seeing that they're different sized footprints, are going to determine the value of the capacitor because these capacitors are of different. Okay, so I think I have only destroyed one component in that little melee. There we go. I think. Yeah, there you can see the little leg that got pulled off because it wasn't properly soldered down and then I was cleaning it with a toothbrush and pulled that leg off. So, we'll see if the board actually works. We'll see. But I have to install a whole nother tool chain for programming the microcontroller on this thing. And and then I need a programmer for actually programming this guy. So I'll have to take a look to see if I have anything that will program a Silicon Labs chip. Maybe um, Maybe I have one. Eventually. I did not have a programmer on hand for this, but um, there is a uh, way of turning a uh, Arduino into a, um, a programmer for these guys. <clears throat> I'll put a link to that website in the uh, to the um, to the GitHub in uh, the description. But um, sadly, she no chooches and. Uh, so I uh, just went ahead and ordered myself a few since these are now back in stock on Amazon and they are really only $8. And just the idea of having a key for things that you do on the web that are important is such a great idea that I have to get myself some. I mean, thank you very much, HackerBox, for providing um, the uh, incentive for me to go ahead and uh, do something um, positive around security on uh, 
on my compute platform. Okay, a couple of quick notes on programming the STM32 um, using Platformio. Um, it works fine in Arduino, just follow the instructions in the uh, instructables if that's what you're using, but if you're trying to get it running um, using uh, Platformio inside of an, the Atom Editor, that's what these notes are for. This is an important jumper because the um, B0 pin, boot 0 pin, um, that's VCC and that's B0 minus. If you want to um, flash this chip, uh, you probably are going to have to um, short these two pins and press reset and then that puts it in bootloader mode. So that allows you to uh, reprogram the microcontroller. That's one note. The other note is I'm um, installing the uh, STM32 environment in Platformio and then um, in your, it, when you create a new project in uh, Platformio, it does not include the um, upload protocol, I believe is the variable name. Yeah, upload protocol in um, your um, platformio.ini file. That should be stlink because you're using the stlink programmer to program it. You don't have to tell what serial port is, it'll just go look for the stlink. Um, and don't forget to add udev rules for the um, stlink. Um, those can be found on the website uh, you know, if you're under Ubuntu or any um, uh, Debian Lake distribution, you can um, add the UDEV rules um, for the ST-Link programmer and you can, I'll put a link to that down in the description. And it really does run fast. It's like, holy smokes. It just rips through it. So, uh, yeah. That's nice. Now, <clears throat> when I... Uh, if you're making the migration from Arduino over to Platformio, it does not have the Arduino preprocessor installed, so you have to make sure that all of your function prototypes appear, or your functions, appear before your main loop. Otherwise, um, the compiler will choke. And there's also a bug in the uh, STM32 library, I think. Um, I'm going to you know, file a bug report with Roger just to be sure, but um, I have to, um, in the STM32 Adafruit library, um, change from write 16 to write um, SPI, write MSPI dot write instead of write 16. So it's probably just a typo. I'll, uh, yeah, just so you know. And that's what that's supposed to look like. It just prints out the uh, the uh, key that you're pressing. One eternity later. Oh man, well that only took forever. Holy smokes. And there. Now the mouse jiggler is working. Okay. So at least, um, at least it wasn't the, uh, at least I got something out of, done out of the hacker box. Holy smokes. That was just about um, the uh, the most uh, the most gut wrenching month of hacker boxing that I have um, experienced. A good grief. Okay, so um, what have we learned? Um, a number of things. First of all, unplug your programmer from the um, the pill when you want it to do something over USB because uh, it will actually get, it'll power this guy, I think, or it automatically puts it in bootloader mode or something like that when it's got these pins connected. So disconnect this and if you want it to act as a USB device, that only took me, well, I'm embarrassed to say how long it took me. Um, but yeah, um, flashing this guy um, what did I use to flash with? I think I used OpenCD from uh, from Texane. Yes, I will put links in the description. That's what I used to do the um, flashing of the um, of the device. And now what we can concentrate on is 
Uh, well, maybe let's just move on reasonably. No, I can't do anything <laughs> until I unplug the pill duck. So yeah, um, that's a lot of fun. I'm, I'm sure it will be a lot of fun to play with uh, one of those. Um, okay, so this is the programmer that I used to program the ST-Link using the um, ST-Link uh, version 2. Um, it is um, a pile of source code on GitHub. Um, it has binaries for a bunch of different um, operating systems. Windows has a binary. Mac OSs have a binary if you're, uh, if you're using it. Arch Linux, Alpine, Fedora, Red Hat, Gentoo, FreeBSD, and OpenBSD, but not the hippopotamus Debian. So you have to build it from scratch. Anyways, fine. Um, it's not too bad. Make, make, and make uh, is all you needed to do. You do have to install the libusb, if I remember correctly. Yeah, libusb 1.1. And then, of course, if you're on a 64-bit um, installation of uh, of Ubuntu or Debian, then you have to make sure that you install the 32-bit versions of libusb. Um, and you also have to make sure that you put in your UDEV rules. And it's also worth remembering that sometimes you have to do that as super as, um, as you do. So following the instructions here are pretty good. Um, then once you've got the ST-Link installed, um, you can um, follow the guide that um, that um, uh, Roger Clark put together. Um, and he has some information on his uh, on his GitHub, and I'll put the links to all of this in the description. Walking through this um, works pretty well, um, although um, it, there's probably easier ways of doing it. But um, following the steps here definitely um, definitely make uh, make it easy because it just works like it should, or as it's described here, and I'll put a link to that into the description. But anyways, yeah, you can, um, you can definitely build it on Ubuntu and, and do an install of um, PillDuck onto your, your blue pill board. Um, now, as you can see, these things don't have a lot of parts. They could probably fit into what would um, ordinarily look like a USB um, thumb drive, so you can have lots of crazy fun. Um, it shows up as a USB keyboard, so you can do keystroke injection and all kinds of good fun like that. Only use it for good or grins. Good or grins. That's all. Don't be evil, folks. And I think that's um, as far as I'm going to go right now with this hacker box. It's, uh, since I just got the email alerting me that the new hacker box is on its way, I should probably wrap this video up. Um, and I've been stumbling around like a blind man in a cave um, for long enough, and I think I am ready to move on. So, um, anyways, yeah, um, at least I got something out of this thing, um, other than uh, frustration with. <laughs> putting together a uh, surface mount device that was well beyond my surface mount um, soldering capabilities. Although I think I did um, learn a lot, even though it didn't work and I broke a pin off of the, um, the SCR here. Um, it totally made me think more about my security posture and I have um, a few of these pre-built on order and now they're back in stock in Amazon. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that was totally worth it. And, um, yeah, so, uh, again, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching and, uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye for now.